when you're can you not marry someone just just to can we carry someone to, to just no, get it's also even then it was also to, to, to go through a year just for marriage. So the Ramam explains that he didn't do it just for marriage. He thought he did it for the right reasons. But really, on their end, they were doing it for marriage, some of them. And he was doing it for the right reasons. And it ended up that they, they, they okay, either that they actually meant it, and later they, 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 they got to be sheila, or the chatzchil, that they, they fooled him. All right. Yeah. Hmm? All right. Not all of them became not religious, so some of them. <coughs> can a goy come down in a gilgul as a yid, or can a yid come as a goy? So the pastures a goy cannot come down in a gilgul as a yid because a goy is a goy. A goy has no neshama. The whole meaning of gilgulim is if you have a neshama, your neshama then comes down. If it didn't finish its job the first time around, it comes down the second time. So a goy has no neshama in the first place, so he has no neshama coming back. Regarding a yid coming down in a, in a, in a body of a goy, but pastures, the answer would be no. I saw that some people say that, that in Kisverizal it says that in rare cases there is such a concept of a, of a yid, yid coming down in, in the body of a goy. I have a book in my house, it's a very uh, strange person, I shouldn't say that uh, on the recording, but Mcholifin is an interesting character that he wrote, a, he lives in Minnesota, lived in Minnesota, he wrote a whole book about, uh, about people going all over America that are gurgulim of Nazi, of, uh, of uh, Holocaust survivors. He said, a so girl grew, grew up in some kind of place, Iowa, in the middle of nowhere, and she grew up with a terrible fear of black boots. And her parents took her to therapy. No one walked to watch her fear from black boots. And later when she got older and she learned about the Holocaust, again, she wasn't Jewish, but well, she realized that she connected. And another person kept having dreams of being locked in and then a shower and then, and then everything going black, which is basically what the gas chambers were. So he has a book with many, many people, interviews, that he, and much there are many of them were going, that these people, are, that they were pastors, that they were, according they had some kind of flashbacks to a previous lifetime, which they were Jews. It wasn't only Jews that were killed then. True, but, uh, but some of them also remember being like a cipher, some of them remember being, being a scribe, a cipher, passion, cipher, stamp. Is this Amata? So, huh? Amata? No, 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 no. This guy is an interesting character, not Amata. I, yeah. uh, I think another reason why you did, can't come down as guy is because if you can come down as a guy, then a guy can come back as a yid, and you just said that that, that can happen. But that's something else. A guy has no neshama in the first place, so nothing wants to come back. A yid has a neshama. It could be that the punishment is he has to go into the body of a guy. And I, I think it also says that so that's why some gave him a result of that. Anymore. Huh? Then all of a sudden he has no Nisham anymore. And if he well, doesn't have Nisham, then he's in Shaman. He's in Shaman in the, the, the first place. He went into this Goyesha Babi just for this, for, to, for his first tickle. But it could be, I think it, it says sometimes gave him that, are that. That guy has the Nisham, and then that guy can come back down and see it. Yeah. yeah. One second. Huh? Aren't there stories that came down as animals? Or animals, yeah. But, so what's the difference? An animal could be elevated to don't. become a yid, the pastures. I mean, a guy also could become a gift. The same thing. Same, but I, I, again, I'm not, I'm not a mumch and kabbalah. I have another say from house all about gilgulim, but for once I can bring it to you. And I don't think it's also about going, but it has tons of gilgulim and gilgulim all the back and forth about it. So look over there. Isn't there another guy that he has in the summer? Like, it says such a thing like that, but love dafka doesn't mean that he's a gilgul of a yid that came back down on a guy. It could be. <laughs> Kenza, Gerim are very, very special. That's what you do. They have a tremendous considered as Nefesh. It says they're Bnei Avram, they have the recognition of Avram of him, so... Kenza. They haven't assembled their whole life. Hmm? They haven't assembled their whole life. It's not like... They it was, it's only revealed later, yeah. Rabbi, two questions. Number one is, you share character traits of your previous Kogolim? Sometimes it says that, yeah. But that's the famous Sikha we have just now on Pesach. About Abu Lazar ben Azar, you said, I really can't achieve him, Shano. So he was only 18 years old. So he says, I'm like 70. Who cares what you're like? He's only 18. What do you expect? So it says he was a Gilgul of whom? Who knows? Shmuel. Huh? Shmuel. Shmuel Anavi. Shmuel Anavi was 52 years old. 52 plus 18 is 70. So I made this. His previous things had a Shaykh system. Characteristics also. There's a famous story with the Oye Vistral, the Abderov. The Abderov that he said he had a black a black a blue mark on his body that he said that in his first Gilgul he was a sheep of Yaakov Avinu. And he gave him a clap once and that's why he has a black and blue mark. <laughs> Hmm? Curly here is also probably goes back. Huh? Well, Curly here is also probably goes back. But it's deep to come down as a person. Huh? That's the way the story goes. Like, I don't know if he was a coin god. He has like, a lot of stories about this Google. You remember them. Yeah. Is there an absolute thing as Ari would have? Is there. What did Ari ask? Well, if a guy thinks of the same thing. Do we have the book in the Mm -hmm. No, that I have in my house. Even my kids don't know where it is. It's hidden away somewhere. Can you bring it? Huh? Can you bring it? 
hidden for a reason. Maybe. It's, uh, can you explain the Chathil Ariber and how we can apply it to our day to day life? So, really, it's, uh, all, it's, it's in every situation you can ask and answer. But a general thing I would say is there's a lot of Bakrim are very confused. If you're not confused yet, then you're going to be confused, and if you, or you're already confused. It's almost impossible for a bachar to reach the age of a, a teenager and go from age 12 to age 20 and have no confusion in life about what's the purpose, why am I here, who said it's true, does it make sense, and so on. It's a very, it's, it's, everyone has, it goes through confusion. Different types, depending on your upbringing, depending on your exposure, everyone has different types of confusion. Chathila means you ignore all the confusion and you just do what you have to do in the right kind of way. And when you get older, after 20, 22, it's in that age, then you're more Yusuf, then you can uh, handle your stuff. You'll be able to see how most of your confusion was, was nothing. So that's a practical thing when you have the back and forth. What should I, where should I go? Just drop it all. Don't, don't think. Don't think about these and yon and about what's my, you know, you, the basics, you know. So the Chathila you just go and serve Hashem and that's it. Obviously, there's other, many, many other applications in every person's life. And all this, I should speak to your local Orthodox rabbi. If you buy grapes from a goy, do you need to be careful about Kili Akerem or Arlo? So the answer is no, because in general, first of all, in Chutz Lodz, we're very makeable in Sophic, but Hatzkil it says a Sophic Arlo, Sophic Kili Akerem is not an issue, but today, even if it, even if it is, it's, so, it's bottled Berev. I mean, uh, not Berev, when it comes to Arlo and Kili Akerem, they are the most common. They're not bottled by Shishim, they're not bottled by Mayo, they're bottled by Masai. It has to be 200 connected the first one. So the Mayo, obviously in the market, it's definitely a lot more kosher than if you would be not kosher. Uh, if you know for a fact that it's Arlan Kedah Kerem, it's different. But with that, you can assume that it's not, especially usually the first three years of regarding Arla, it's not such good produce anyway, they don't usually market it. And Kili Akerem, you'll see the difference in the grape with that, so it shouldn't be, it's, the passion is not. Kili Akerem of a guy is also? If you know 100% that he actually did it. I thought if a guy is Kilai, not 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 is great specific. How can someone hold himself back from doing Zed on Avatola? So I mentioned this a few times, I'll say it now inside. The Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch says in Kuf Nun Aleph, Se'iv Vav, so the Kitzvah Shulchan Aruch says, Haret Se'el Lishmer Atzme Mechet Zed. Someone wants to guard himself from not doing this Avedo, you should make sure not to speak nivel pe. Make sure not to lie. Don't speak achilus. Don't speak negative about other people. Umilitzonus and don't don't clown around all the time. That's one thing. Dibur. Five people did that, but that's all about dibur. Make sure not to listen to these kind of things as well. All five of these things: nivel pe, lying, achilus, lashon hara, and litzonus. You should be careful to keep your promises or make sure to always say Next, don't be worried the whole time. Don't, ha- don't let your anxieties take over you. Which I said a moment ago, don't let all these confusions, don't focus, don't dwell on your problems. And you should also be careful not to have machshav azaris. And before you go to bed, you should learn Torah. Or any other time that you feel that you're in such a danger of falling to this, it's harder. Always try to learn Torah beforehand. Say the first four kapitlach of Tehillim, like we say the night of Yom Kippur. The Yizor Shaladishim Becheder Yechidi, or without the Rebbe says, Babayis Yechidi, do not sleep alone in the house. So those are the eights that are brought them over here, which this elaborates on them, but it's all the same. Thing. Can we have a class on how to tie tzitzit strings? Who wants a class like that? Raise your hand. Five people, it's a small class. Okay, maybe we another will try to make a class like that if there's an interest. Maybe one of the... Only if it's during your stuff. Some of them want to during Eon, some of them want to during Sidney. Some of them want to We'll just have a little bit. Class for each now. Each Bachel will come in his board class and come and ask. Why are little kids called Tinoike Shalbis Rabban? Now, it's, it's not every little kid is, uh, kid is called a Tinoik Shal Beis Rabban. Any child that learns in the Cheder is a Tinoik. He's a child that belongs to Beis Rabban, to the house of the teacher. He's involved in learning. There's a quote from Chazal, and ter- that children are, a child in, in Indian shouldn't have any worries. He doesn't have the worries of an, of a, of an adult to support a family. He doesn't have the confusions of a bacher, of a, being, a, being, a, being a teenager. And a male, all he has in his life is just Torah. So a Tinoik is the best time to be a Tinoik Shal Beis Rabban. When did Tzimtzum Harishin happen? 
Um, this is our sister Zoe. The Pasha, the Pshat, Tim Tzobar Rishon, Hashem created the world. So, and then kind of, in case of Arizal, he describes what Hashem did in order to create the world. One of the things were that there was an iron soil that filled up the vast space, and then we started moved it aside, and then he started creating the world. So, the Pasha, the answer would be that right before Hashem created the world, which was 5,781 years ago, Hashem, right before that, made Tim Tzobar Rishon, and then from then on, that's the way it is. That would be the most simple way of explaining it. Um, if you want to ask more, the question is, well, how many years did Hashem wait till he did it? So that question is answered by saying that there was no concept of years before Hashem created him to Marisha. There was no such thing as, there was no Zman. As the Maggit says, the Zitra Maggit says, Man is also a Nivra. So until Hashem created Zman, there was no Zman. So there was no such thing as Hashem was alive or existing for a billion years, and then he decided, okay, now I'm creating the world. It's something which can't be understood. So how long was he there for? The question how long doesn't fit because he wasn't long, it wasn't the amount of time. That's regarding when it started. When it happened is when it, 5,781 years ago. The second discussion is if it happened a long time ago and it's over or not. So Bechlal has explained that all the Inyanim of Siddish, Vira Sakelim, and Ishtasos, all these things are not just like a, a one time happening and then now we were at the bottom of the chain and we're trying to get up again, rather it's a constant process. Somehow all these Inyanim are still existing. The Timsum Edition, the Ur, the Shvira, the Kelim, all that, they're all happening at the same time in some kind of way. What exactly is Bittul? Why is it so important to have it, and how do I get it? So I'll start with the second question. Why is it so important to have Bittul? It's so important to have Bittul because it says, The Ebishter is only, can only reside where there is Bittul, and the Ebishter created the world because he wants to did a and he wants to the Shkira to come here, and the only way that can happen is if we are Bittul. That's why it's so important to be Bittul, because that's the only way that we can fulfill the Kavon of Dira B'tach what exactly is it and how do I get it? What it is, is when a person doesn't feel yeshus, a person doesn't feel that my